Okay, so my phone ran out of room. Um, I made some room, and now we're back. So I was going to show you control voltage uh, influence of step length. Basically, right now, let's see, I've got a short loop length. And uh, let's go ahead and make it the shortest possible loop length, which is one. And uh, I have the loop length control set by the Rene. Um, I'm no longer using the Rene as a quantizer because I only have one sequencer in quantizer, um, which is the Rene. So when one of them is doing one of their jobs, the other one is no longer available. So uh, basically I have unquantized note data going into the dual digital oscillator. It's going to sound very atonal, but it's just coming right from the Turing machine. Um, so let's see here. Uh, let's listen to what's going on. Oh, this is, by the way, still just inverse locking. So all of the variation going on is coming from the control voltage uh, coming from the Rene, and that's going at, I believe, one-sixth of the clock speed of the... Uh, let's go ahead and just make it one-eighth to, to uh, defeat the purpose of this whole design. Um, so, you know, every eight steps, the Rene is sending it a new step length uh, into the Turing machine. Let's hear what that sounds like. Oh, I see. I'm getting irregularity because of that. That's kind of cool, right? Let's go ahead and uh, make this a loop eight, length eight, and then uh, we can attenuate that signal, get it so that the voltage is now negative. So you can see here, even though the loop is locked, you're getting a lot of variation in the in the output um, because we're changing where the bits are going. So if you go into a locked loop and you change the step length and then you go back to the original step length, you're going to get a different loop uh, a lot of the time since the you know it's a volatile thing. With a loop length of eight, it's really easy to predict. Oh god, it's doing that again. Well, I just unlocked it. So, I mean, this is basically doing what you would expect to a random number generator, which is that it's making a lot more random, uh, in that you don't always get, you know, a repeating sequence of the, of the same number of bit, uh, sorry, the same number of steps. So, it's getting pretty weird. Um, let's go ahead and do the long loop length. The same CV affects both loop lengths. I'm gonna lock it again. Why not? Sounds like a dying giraffe or something. But it illustrates the point. So, uh, right now the Rene is influencing the loop length, and I think I'm going to switch it to my pingable envelope generator, which is outputting a very slow triangle wave right now. And uh, we'll see what that ends up doing. Uh, I might want to, in bipolar mode, okay, good. Uh, let's go set, set it back on the short loop length. God, I hate that sound. Okay, change it up a little bit. Yeah, so some more randomness. Whole lot of randomness. Let's maybe do it faster. Faster triangle wave going into the control voltage input now. That's very repetitive. I wonder why. 
Uh, let's try attenuating something. Oh, I know. What if I do a uh, unipolar signal? Set the loop length to one. Is that how I started this? I don't even remember. It's probably giving me only negative voltage right now. There we go. Yeah, so that's pretty interesting. Honestly, the main reason that I'm gonna turn that off. The main reason I like influencing the voltage is when I'm using the Turing machine as an oscillator. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug the Turing machine into my mixer, and then uh, let's see, we'll clock it from my corgasmatron, which I am feedbacking in order to turn it into roughly a square wave signal. And then uh, we'll take the quantized output of the Rene, put it into the input, and uh, clock it a little bit faster. It's in snake mode, so we're getting a normal old... Uh, or that's not what I wanted. I wanted forward. Snake mode, so we're getting a 16-bit step sequencer. God, steps and bits are just interchangeable at this point. 16-step um, sequencer controlling the, the pitch of the Corgasmatron, which is clocking the Turing machine, and the pingable envelope generator is changing the loop length, which in this case ends up turning, uh, it basically sets the Turing machine to a harmonic of the input signal, which sounds really cool. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. So if I were to, this is the, turn it down a little bit, the regular Turing machine uh, sound and then I'm gonna go ahead and manually change the loop length turn that up a little more actually okay So just like in the original one where turning the loop length to 16 steps brought down the um, the pitch by an octave, right here you're basically changing the pitch ratio by an integer amount, and so you're actually getting even, you know, just intonation harmonics related to the input frequency. Um, doing this in inverse clocking is highly advisable since if you do it in normal clocking, you're gonna end up with a bunch of ones and then basically no signal. So let's go ahead and just for the sake of it, show you, turn the pitch up. So that's in 16 uh, steps. Now I'm changing the loop length.